Before getting into any details about how scripting works in Max, let's try to understand what programming is in a general sense by learning a bit of a programming history. A user of 3ds Max or any other software is in fact a person using a tool specifically made with a certain set of needs in mind. The designers and programmers of these tools have an idea of how an average user wants to work, what is the easiest and most efficient way for him to get his job done. The fact that for most markets there are multiple and often very different tools available is the evidence that designers can have very different ideas about how basically the same functionality should work. And they don't get it right all the time. Not every user is the same and not everyone wants to work in the same fashion. The best tools out there are the ones you can customize not only on the level of the user interface looks, but where you can actually add and modify basic functionality to your own taste. Scripting or SDK programming is the way for this. It's the emergency patch, basically, for the potholes that the developers of 3ds Max could not foresee. Now, computers are not smart. They do what we tell them to do. Learning a programming language opens up the door and makes us capable of making the computer do what we actually want it to do. In the early days when computers were rare, computer programming was still the privilege of the few scientists having access to these machines. Since they knew what they were doing, programming languages could be obscure and cumbersome. No one really cared. An example of such a language is assembly. We call these low-level programming languages, which means that the programmers give direct orders on very atomic, low-level processor tasks. Painting a pixel red would be made up of command lines, for example, like put this number to the processor's AX register, then multiply the AX with 5, then put it in the BX register, blah, 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 blah. Doesn't really sound like fun, does it? As computers started becoming cheaper and more accessible, the need to quickly fill up the market with all sorts of different software made it inevitable that higher level programming languages that didn't show up the smelly and dirty ways of how the processor works under the hood would become the preferred languages for software development. If I want to paint a pixel red, let's just tell the computer to do that. A new genre of programming languages emerged that treated programmers in a more human-like manner. They soon became programming environments where we could write our source code on a high level using more human language-like commands. And when we want to run this program, we get the programming environment to translate what we did down to the low-level language that is the computer's native language. The process of this translation is called compilation or compiling. So we create a high-level source code that we can understand, then compile it into a form that the computer understands. BASIC, Pascal, C or C++ are examples of such high-level languages. For now, what we have been talking about was how to program, how to command the computer itself. In the case of MaxScript, we go even further, since now we are programming another program how to behave. There are many different types of software packages out there that have got so specialized that they now have their own built-in scripting languages, which are used to customize their behavior. These languages usually aren't pre-compiled to the native language of the computer. They are called scripting languages because we basically create a script, a list of things to do, then our host program tries to understand and do these commands one by one runtime. These are probably the highest level of programming languages, since we are as far from the actual processor tasks as possible. So let's forget lower level programming languages for now, because we have arrived where we want to spend most of our time at the level of scripting languages. How do these work? As I mentioned earlier, these scripts are lists of commands that the host program, 3ds Max in our case, tries to understand runtime. To understand what the correct syntax and semantics means, let's see the simple real-life example of making ourselves a banana shake. This simple script so far consists of two lines. I put bananas and milk into the blender and use the blender. This sounds simple, but would this actually work? What if we don't have bananas or milk at home? Our script would surely crash. So let's see version 2 of this script where we fixed the missing ingredients bug. Go to grocery store, buy bananas, buy milk, go back home and then put the bananas and milk into the blender and then use the blender. Sounds foolproof enough, but is it really? Let's pretend that you are a robot and you don't use your common sense, just like 3 d Max wouldn't. You would probably put the bananas into the blender with their skins on. Computer programs will not do anything you don't specifically tell them to do, so yes, you have to put a peel banana command into the script, otherwise you will end up with a mess instead of a banana milkshake. So after adding a couple more seemingly redundant but very important commands, our script would look something like this. Go to the grocery store, buy some bananas, buy some milk, pay for the bananas and milk, go back home, 
peel the bananas, put milk into the blender, put some sugar into the blender, put some vanilla into the blender, put the peeled bananas into the blender, turn the blender on, wait a little, then turn the blender off. This sounds okay for now, but if a robot carried out this script, he would surely stop at the line, get some bananas. Since some doesn't actually mean anything to him. When we go to buy some bananas, we usually don't have an exact number in mind. We buy a couple or a bunch, but we never go to buy exactly four bananas. However, when you're telling a robot to buy bananas, you have to be very specific, otherwise it would get confused. What I'm trying to get to is that when you're scripting, you have to assume that the program you're talking to is a complete idiot. We talked about how the semantics or the meaning of the given commands are very important. But the syntax, the grammar, is just as crucial in making 3 ds Max understand what we want from it. If the above script was written with slightly off grammar or spelling, like, say, go to the grocery store and buy some no bananas, well, chances are that we would still know what the intended meaning was. But that's because we have a brain that cheats. It corrects slight errors. But computers are, as I mentioned, complete idiots. If the spelling or grammar is wrong, our script will fail. So both syntax and semantics are really important to learn. This script we have just written shows how a very basic command list type script looks like. It's linear since we are going line by line, executing each line on the way, never stepping back. If a line fails, our entire script dies on us. What if the grocery store is closed? What if they don't have bananas? The rest of the commands would all fail, or if they wouldn't fail, chances are that the results would be unexpected. If you're doing a proper foolproof script, we have to keep in mind all the possible problems that might occur.